you can have the bread. Can you hear me? Does this thing work? Yes. You can have the bread after church for hospitality.
Blessed be the Holy One who leads us into life. Glory and power be God's forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the maker and redeemer of all who live, grant to the departed the unsearchable benefits of the life-giving love of your Son, that on the day of his appearing, all may be manifested as your children, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they're going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of the others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, 
and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, 
God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. I have not come from judgment, but has come from death and life. Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming, and it is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the love that holds us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Today is a, gr a day of great care in our Christian tradition. The Feast of All Souls invites us to hold before God all whom we love and see no longer. On this day, we remember that our grief and sorrow are held in the mystery of God's undying life. For nothing in all creation, not even death itself, could separate us from the voice of love in the end. We also remember how for centuries the church suggested that our prayers for the dead were essential to their salvation. Now, at this point in time, we see that as a bit maybe incomplete or perhaps misguided theology, for we know that God's love enfolds all beings who live from the moment of our birth to the hour of our death, 
and love already has overwhelmed sin and death through the never-failing love of the one who gave his life that we might live. So our prayers on this day are much more about creating space to be with what is, to honor all that we carry in our hearts. It's also a day that reveals just how limited our language is. It's a day where we shouldn't prioritize our words at all. Our prayers of remembrance and devotion, after all, fall silent in that reverence that we hold as we contemplate our departed with memories that are tender, holy, and true. Yes, this day invites us into deeper surrender to God's consolation, a consolation that brings peace that passes human understanding. We remember how even the eternal word who spoke life into being at the very beginning of time, even Jesus himself lay quiet in the tomb on Holy Saturday. And that sacred silence, in that space where love's word would not be shut out, that silence showed there was power coming to raise Jesus from the dead. When grief touches our life, so much falls silent. We hear that in the words of the Requiem today. And we know that in our lived experience of mourning, a process that is painful and yet paradoxically has the power to attune our ears to a deeper, more profound truth. For the voice of love calls out to us even amid our earthly sorrows. And love reassures us that death does not have the final word. Our burial liturgy says it this way, life is changed, not ended. And so on this day we turn toward the one who weeps with us when we mourn, the one who draws near to us time and again with tender mercy. For in Jesus we find God willing to bear everything with us, to weep, to mourn, and yes, even to die so as to raise us to new life. We see that in the stories of Jesus' ministry, stories that recount how every time our Lord raised someone from the dead, Jesus did it by a miraculous word, spoken in perfect love. With Jairus' daughter, little girl, get up. To the son of the widow of Nain, young man, I say to you, arise. At the tomb of his dear friend Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. That saving word comes to us too whenever we are bowed low by the weight of our pain and sorrow. And the undying word whispers softly and surely, calling us to hear the unshakable promise of life beyond death an undying life of never-failing love that God shares with us by grace. In our scriptures today, we hear that those who have died have perhaps even greater sensitivity than we to hearing love's voice. In John's gospel, Jesus says the dead already hear the voice of the Son of God. And he wasn't just talking to the people around him, saying they were dead men and women walking. He was talking about those who have gone before us into eternity. These, these dear ones who have died, now hear love's voice without fail, for they rest 
in peace in God's nearer presence where no pain can ever touch them again. They know the great love God is always speaking into existence, for they too have become eager messengers of its sacred promise. In the eternal realms, death's sting is swallowed up by love's victory. And these servants of God, the faithful who have departed this earth, they hear love's voice clearly. The voice that calls them and commissions them to participate in love's healing labors, transforming our losses and sorrows. On today, we hear that auditory imagery of Jesus emphasized, even amplified by the Apostle Paul, who describes the risen one's cry of command like a trumpet of the archangel ringing out on that final day when God recreates heaven and earth through the word of love. Paul believes the dead will hear love's call even before we do, that they will be awakened by the word of our Lord, and all of us will be caught up in that love which raises us to new life. I wonder what you make of that picture of us entering eternity together, held by the love that cherishes each and every one of us as beloved and unique and irreplaceable, as cherished in the heart of God. These images surely inspire our prayers of quiet confidence on this solemn day. And the word himself, Jesus Christ, invites us to turn toward these practiced listeners who have been granted keener ability to hear the voice of love. Jesus nudging us, encouraging us to know that they are near to us in the mystery of that deeper life in which we all share. And their voices, as they come, as they surely do, can help our ears learn to listen for love's patient call. Yes, love unites us with all who have gone before, and love shares its grace moment by moment, preparing us to welcome love's call on that ultimate day. For now, may we encourage one another to rest in hope, to speak words of life in the face of each and every voice that would speak anything other than the love of God in this world. Because we do wait in trust, knowing that love is calling us all home. In that day when human sorrow and suffering will flee away at last, and in all the days that lie ahead of us, may we know the embrace of our Creator's never-failing love. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us confess the mystery of faith in the words of the Nicene. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord of life, you made human beings in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give thanks for all whom we remember today, for the grace and mercy they received from you, for all that was good in their lives, for memories of them that we treasure. Today, we remember those in our St. Paul's community who have died or have been laid to rest in our columbarium during the past year, especially Claudia Elving, Christine Elliott, Dawn Elliott, Jan Elliott, Marge Harger, Patrick Moore, Chris Parrish, Pamela Pegley, George Simon, Elisa Young, Viliami Young. We also pray for friends and family members of those in our community who have died, along with all whom we carry in our hearts who already have gone to their eternal rest. I invite your prayers of remembrance for any whom you may wish to name aloud or silently at this time. All right, Ella. Elaine. Esther. God of grace. God of grace. You promise eternal life to all who receive your mercy. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death has been swallowed up in life. Lord, in your mercy. Loving shepherd, you desire that none should be lost. Gather all who feel betrayed or abandoned. Be near to the vulnerable, especially immigrants, asylum seekers, and refugees. Near to all whose trust has been shaken and all whose faith is known to you alone, that each may know your provision, peace, and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty Savior, you bring joy out of grief and life out of death. Look with mercy upon all who mourn. Carry us in our times of struggle, suffering, and darkness. Strengthen us by the healing power of your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of transformation, 
You are tender towards your children. Your gentleness surrounds creation. Heal our memories of hurt and our failure to honor your image in one another. Give us wisdom and courage to use the time we are given here on earth to serve all whom Jesus loves as we follow in your way of sacrificial love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle God, you move us to compassion. We remember veterans of this nation and members of diverse tribes and nations who have laid down lives in service to peoples and countries. Transform the hatred and pride that polarizes your family and destroys community through discord and division. Heal our human pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of kindness, you inspire our care for one another. We thank you for tender-hearted friends in this community, especially as we orchestrate St. Paul's celebration of life gatherings. May their ministry honor those we whom, with whom we love and see no longer. Reveal your presence with us, comforting us amid loss and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Creator, entrusting into your care all whom you have made. We give thanks for our communion with all your faithful people as we make our prayers through the grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another God's peace. Good morning. It is a blessing and a privilege to get to worship with you this morning. We have our altar of remembrance and our uh, ofrenda of altar over here, the Dia de los Muertos themed ofrenda. We know that you carry so many loved ones in your hearts this day, and we are grateful to lift up our memories and prayers together. There are so many announcements that I commend to your attention in the printed bulletin, but in the spirit of this reverent, and quiet reflection, we will continue. But please know that all are welcome to receive Holy Communion at St. Paul's. And if you are newer among us, there is real wine in the cup. You can help the cup bearer by holding the bottom of the cup and guiding it to your lips so they know that you've received. There are gluten-free wafers if you should like, so you can just ask for that at the rail. If you, for any reason, prefer to receive a blessing rather than the bread or wine, just cross your arms over your chest and we'll pray a prayer of blessing. But do know, all are welcome at this table of love. 
as we are nourished to continue in faith and hope through the, through the saving work of our Lord Jesus Christ. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice for the whole world.
We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away and yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready, so come. You who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come, because it is Christ who invites us to meet God here.
standing as we are able in body, mind, or spirit, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue in the risen, in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I hope you will join us for coffee hour in the Skillings Garden after the service. And as you go forth, bearing love into the world. May the love that overcomes all differences, that heals all wounds and puts to flight all fears, the love that reconciles all who have become separated, may this love live in us and among us, now and always. And the blessing of God, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. amen.